best game recorder for PC is the topic of today's video. If you're new to the True True Tucker channel, please go consider subscribing down below. I really do appreciate it and leaving a like on this video. This is a really good video and I'm showing you the full process of recording your screen. Now this video is a bit longer because I'm showing you all the best settings. So I do really, really recommend watching this video throughout so you know all the settings and all the ways to do it because obviously I revealed the software earlier on, but the settings are pretty key to having a good recording experience. So any further ado, let's jump straight into this video. All you need to do is come to www obsproject.com and here is the software now before you click off because you find out what the software is do not because I'm actually going through the best settings for it how to install it and the full installation process for this good software to record your screen so as you can see here it's a free and open source software for video recording and live streaming obviously we're video recording I'll make a specific video on live streaming very soon and download it and start streaming quickly and easily on Windows Mac or Linux so all you want to do is come click on Windows supports Windows 8 8.1 and 10 so click on there and it's going to start the downloading process here it's only 70 megabytes so it's pretty small uh, compared to some files and it shouldn't take too long to download as you can see 10 seconds and you just got the screen here saying thank you for downloading OBS so I think it's now done so what you want to do is come and click on it just here as you can see OBS studio full installer click it and it's just opening up so it won't take a minute and then my screen will go black because it's the Microsoft security and then all you do is click OK yes I think it was actually and then we're getting another pop-up just here so mine was behind my Chrome so you may need to do that um, but yeah otherwise you'll be fine so then what we want to do is come and just do the normal installation process so next uh, make sure you read through this I have before click next and then you choose where you want to install OBS so I'm happy with mine in the program files and then I'm just going to go and click install as you can see you do need 243 megabytes so I'm going to click install and it should just run the normal process so wait for that to happen it doesn't take very long at all and uh, then we can go and do the main settings of OBS so yeah it's a really good software it works on Mac and Linux I'm going to be making like a dedicated um, alternative to Macs as well soon but anyway we'll open this up and we'll wait for it to open now as you can see here you've got this so I'm just gonna click no because I'm pretty confident I can do it all and you can run at any time so let's just put this here and make it full screen so we can just see what we're fully doing so uh, let's make this full screen now as you can see down here at the bottom it's pretty small as you can see it's a CPU uh, 0.4% and 30 FPS and we can see our mic so the first thing you do is got your scene here so I'm just going to click on that and click rename to recording because you obviously may set up these scenes for live streaming as well now a scene is essentially like a screen and then to your screen you can add your video capture or like a webcam you can add your monitor stuff like that um, so I'll go through that in a minute uh, because we want to do the settings first so what I want to do is come down here and you'll come down to settings and now we'll get this pop up here so let's quickly jump into this so to be fair in here is pretty general is normally pretty set up um, as you can see it's just like automatically record and streaming um, keep recording when stream stops stuff like that which you can go through but it's not really it's more personal preference uh, so streaming is obviously if you're going to be um, streaming um, to twitch or YouTube you can change that there but we're doing recording so come to output now what we want to do is come to output and change output mode to advanced it just gives you more settings and you can go a bit more specific so what you want to do is come along to recording and you can go and change here so this is the first thing I recommend doing although we do need to do some more stuff in streaming in just a moment come to recording and you can just do I do always do standard uh, you change that obviously where you want to record it and you can generate file name without space that's obviously personal preference make sure you change recording format to however you want to edit I use mp4 personally and it's the most sort of widely known software so I do recommend that um, it's a lot easier but obviously here it does say something about unrecoverable but you shouldn't need to know that uh, audio trucks you can use as well I don't personally change that and encoder personally use the stream encoder because we'll set this up anyway um, so yeah I'm gonna use um, stream encoder and then that's the main things for the recording um, section always click apply after you change any setting and then we'll come back to streaming and now here even though it's a streaming is still OBS still uses it for your recording settings so I'll quickly run through this so use x264 and you can click rescale output you don't need to though because we're recording and I'll go into that in a minute so at the minute we are using 1920 by 1080 we change that in the video tab and I'll show you that obviously in a minute CBR I personally use that but I do change this to 5000 now I think this is to do with the more you increase this the more power it will use so if you've got a less powerful PC you can lower it so this is testing depending on your quality so maybe 4000 I'm going with 5000 now that's okay um, so the interval is when changing 
scenes, I believe. Um, so that is fine. Uh, you can leave it at zero. Now down here, you can use CPU usage. As you can see, higher equals less CPU. Currently, I'm on very fast. My I've got a pretty good CPU. Um, and the more you go down, the more... Um, power your CPU is going to be need, required to record so if you've got more of maybe a faster PC you can use ultra fast but it may not the quality may not be as good um, but as you can see when mine's very fast you can always measure your CPU down there so if it gets like really high then you can just um, come down here and say put it up to a higher um, speed so yeah mine's on very fast that's fine for me and uh, audio to here you need to go to desktop audio if you want to use a desktop audio and for mic obviously mine's just on my default but that may be like my webcam mic but it should be my right mic so I'm just going to put that on to line I think is the right one if I click apply um, no nope, wrong one um, so as you can see it's pretty easy you can literally just test it and if I start speaking it's back so that is the right mic so yeah these are pretty fine uh, depends if you've got secondary mics and secondary desktop audios which I probably imagine you don't but obviously everyone's different right um, which is useful down here so say if sometimes I don't know why but sometimes people just like to mute their mic you can just enable push to mute so you know that might be useful and um, you can go and change that in the hotkeys I'll cover that in a minute um, but yeah let's jump into video now here here is pretty much like the main part of where most people are going to be interested in. So base canvas is what this screen looks like here. Obviously there will be an image there in a minute um, and it will change the aspect ratio. So I personally always have base canvas on um, 1920 by 1080 but it's personal preference. Output scaled resolution is the actual quality which is going to be recorded. So um, mine's currently in 720p, I want 1080p. So I'm going to click there. It gives you a list of all the options. So if you want to be in 720p, go down to here. If you want 1080, come here and then click apply, of course. Now, downscale filter, I'm pretty happy with the bicubic one. Obviously, the higher you increase it, the more CPU usage is going to be required, so I'll leave it on there. Personally, I do record in 60 FPS. Uh, I just like more of the smoothness of it and it comes across better in videos, so I always have that there. Um, but obviously, you can have yours on 30. I would always go for 30 or 60. It's just mainly the commonly known used numbers, I guess, so yeah. Then click apply. And then we can go down to hotkeys. Now in hotkeys, this is if you want to have like a key for starting the stream. So maybe if you want like, uh, let's say zero to start recording, click zero. And when I press zero, recording will start. Um, or you can have like F12, you know, that's a common one uh, on backspace. <laughs> so then to delete that, you just click here. Oh no, rubbish, sorry. And then you can, uh, or you can undo, etc. So it's just a normal settings um, for hotkeys, and they literally everything here. Obviously, if you're in like a four screen game and you've only got one monitor, this is really useful for starting to record. Um, so that's really useful there. So then in advanced, this is pretty much you can remain the same. For color format, I usually use RGB for recording. As you can see here, it's primarily intended for recording. So if I do recommend using RGB in recording, but if you're streaming, I would change that back to um, NV12. But yeah, that's fine for me. So file formatting is what it will name the file. Um, so what I often do is you don't need to click this because we've already changed it to MP4. But if you want to, if you have a recording on FLV, you can do that and it will convert it. So you have two files. You have the the original file and it will convert it to MP4. But that's unnecessary because we've already got it as an MP4. And here's the file formatting, so you can change what it is. So I think that's like year, month, day, hour, minute. Um, so yeah, that will help what the file will look like once we've gone and recorded, which is useful. And then you just got general internet stuff down here, which is more for the streaming stuff. But this is the main thing. So that's what your, your name's going to be. It's going to be pretty long, but I don't mind that personally. Um, and that's fine with me. And then we click apply. So now we've finished inside of the settings. We are ready to go and make our sources. So what you want to do is once you've got your scene, so we can have an, like another scene for streaming, just as an example. And you can switch between these. So obviously we're recording. So I'm going to do the plus sign and go and do so then you've got the options here so you can for when you're recording your screen you may record in game so you do that and it will do that specific game um, or you can do window capture and that will just do that specific window i want to record my whole monitor so that's display capture click on there and then you can name it so display capture is what i want to call it but i could say like new um, but i'll just name it display capture again and then click ok and then as you can see here, it looks really, really weird. Uh, and click OK. I've got two monitors, um, so I can go and switch it. And that's my audacity, my mouse moving here. So I think it'll be easier if I use that, otherwise it will just look really weird. So as you can see, this is my monitor. And I can move my audacity around just like normal. And this will be yours. So if you have got one monitor, uh, which I know probably most people do have, but obviously it depends on you, you can have it there. And then it will just do like a mirror effect. But obviously, when I move this away, you can then just see the normal um, 
screen so yeah if I like minimize it it will just be normal and when I start recording so that is like the main settings I think and then obviously to start recording you literally just have to press start recording and then this will increase the CPU usage as you can see it has shot up I'm recording like twice if that makes sense i'm recording it two times so i'm recording this and i'm recording again so my cpu is only at 12 percent which is pretty decent actually um so i can this is pretty these settings work for me and i can do other stuff so if your cpu is really high it will cause your computer to lag but the quality will be better so it's that sacrifice you want to make so then i click stop recording and we can wait a minute and then i'll go and load up that file for you uh which is in my videos so here is the video, as you can see it's really fine and you can see my mouse moving around and yeah it's an mp4 uh, as you can see up here if I can find it, um, you should, uh, no it doesn't say but anyway it is an mp4 and that's the name, obviously like I said that's how it'll look and yeah that's it guys um, and then you can add other scenes so if you want to record say a different one so you could have that and then when you switch it just changes it so you, then you keep them completely separate so you can have different um, so like sources and backgrounds and also if you want to add a webcam come to recording and you can go here and go and do video capture device click ok and then it'll come up here I haven't got mine plugged in so yeah I'll click cancel on that but yeah that is the tutorial I hope you enjoyed it leave a like and I'll catch you in the next one peace